progress is being made. We now have wings on the Super Duty. Well, this was quicker and easier than I thought. Yesterday, me and Brian and Gordon were sitting around and we wondered if three people were enough to put the wings on the airplane. So we gave it a try. We put the right wing on and that was really easy to do. So I set up the camera, got ready to put the left wing on and forgot to hit record. So I have no footage of us actually putting the wings on, but I will explain how three of us did it. I was gonna have Brian and Gordon come back and reenact how we did this, but those guys are too busy. So I'm just gonna explain how we did this. So imagine, first of all, the wing is sitting on a workbench. Gordon lifted up the wing tip. Brian lifted up the root end of the wing. When Gordon lifted up the wing tip, I slid this stand that I made under the wing tip. Then I walked over here, and since Brian was holding this end of the wing up, I guided the spar into the, the main steel spar here and put the bolt in. Once that bolt was in, everybody could let go. The wing was supported on the root end, and it was supported on the wingtip end with this stand. So it's really easy to do. That's how we did it with just three people. With the wings now attached, you will notice they are only attached to the fuselage. Obviously, I don't have any struts fit yet. So we have a bolt going through the main spar here. And in the back, I just have that clamped on. There's a little tab. You can see this big, thick piece here. There's a little tab that comes out and there's a hole pre-drilled in that tab. And what I do is I'll have to match drill that hole into the aft spar. Now back to the Zenith plans, you'll notice this little note right here that the wing angle of incidence needs to be three degrees. And that's measuring from the bottom of the wing at the main spar and this, there's a cabin frame tube right here. So from the, if we set the tube at zero, the wing has to be three degrees. Now the way we do that is we put a level on this tube and we'll zero that tube zero degrees basically. Then we take the level over to the spar area and we adjust the wing until it's three degrees. And we can adjust the wing to get that three degrees by moving that aft spar up and down. Now it'll take very small movements up and down, but once you get it in position to where the wing is at three degrees, I'll put that clamp back on and then I can match drill that hole. The next thing I'm getting ready for is to set the dihedral of the wings and get the uh, wing struts cut and fit. So the first thing I did was put on the upper wing attachment with the bolt going through it. And what I noticed is this hole that's in this piece here needs to be reamed out to the proper size. And it would be easier to do before you install this in the wing. So if you haven't built your wings yet, you may wanna test fit this piece to this piece uh, and the hole and get everything squared away. The other thing I had to do was you can see that this piece is rounded in here. And this piece has 90 degree corner edges. And what was happening is this piece wouldn't slide on far enough because the corner of here started interfering with the round part on here. So what I had to do was take a file and just file down the edge on here, like around the, around the bottom here, just to kind of let it match this curve. So you might have to do that on yours too. So before you even put this in the wing, if you haven't built your wings yet, you may want to get all of this assembly kind of at least test fit together. Now I also have the upper strut, upper aft wing strut fitting attached. And to attach that again, you have to round the edge of this piece here, drill the hole, get it all prepped and ready. And it's uh, temporarily attached there, ready to go. So both of the upper wing strut attach fittings are installed. Now I wanted to show you why I'm installing those upper wing strut attach fittings now. So for this next part, let's assume that the hole in the aft spar is drilled and the wing stands are adjusted so that I have my required dihedral. The next step would be to fit the wing struts. 
And as I attach it to the bottom fitting on the fuselage, you can see how long these struts are. And you can see that they have to be cut. Having that upper strut attach fitting installed will let you get an idea of where you need to cut the wing struts. As I noted at the beginning of the video, it's been about three weeks since I've actually had the wings on the fuselage. But on the left wing, I had to take it back off and put a little shim in between the aft spar and that mounting tab on the fuselage. And between my work schedule and everybody else's work schedule, it took about three weeks to get people here to do that. But we got it done yesterday, so I've got a lot more done moving forward now. And for the rest of the video, I will show you what I've been working on. Well, you can see I have drilled those holes through the mounting bracket and through the main, or through the, the trailing edge spar, the aft spar. I've done that on both wings. So now the incidence is now set on the wings and I can now set the dihedral. In order to set the wing dihedral, I have a piece of string going over the rivet line here. So it's under this Clico and you probably can't really tell here, but it, it runs all the way to the other wing tip and it goes over this row of rivets. Now to set the incidence, we come back here to the root side of the wing next to the fuselage and you can see our string here. You can see the top of the wing. This, you want this to be 95 millimeters on both wings. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can cut a block of wood that's 95 millimeters and just set it in here and get the correct distance where you can use a ruler and, and measure it where the string is at. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. The one tip I have for you though that, that I've had to learn the hard way, I guess, is you wanna find a string that doesn't stretch or stretches minimally. The string I originally did this with, I just couldn't use it because, you know, there's a, what, a 35 foot span or 34 foot span or something, however, however much the wingspan is on here. And so what happens is this string, it really starts to sag down in the middle, no matter how tight you pull it, it starts to sag down. Uh, so I went to Home Depot and I got different string and the string that's on here now is this string right here. This is the stuff I bought at Home Depot. And it does stretch a little bit, but not nearly as much as the other string I was using. So I can get a pretty straight line with this string. So this is already done. What I did is I cut a piece of wood, 95 millimeters, and I put it under here. Um, so that's how I did it. It's not hard to do at all. It's just, it's kind of like a puzzle because, you know, if this string is a little bit high on that side and it's perfect on that side, if you just move this wing down a little bit to bring the string down, then you're also changing that side. So it just takes very small adjustments on both wings. Now the way I change the dihedral of the wing as I'm getting that 95 millimeters is I just take this wooden stand and you can use a, a step ladder or whatever you want. I just got some junk wood and made these stands. But because there's dihedral in the wing, the further out you move this, it's going to lower the wing. And of course, the further you push this in, it's going to raise the wing. So it's just kind of a puzzle of moving these in and out on both wings until you have the string on both wings there at 95 millimeters. So it's not hard to do. It took me a little while to do just, just playing the game of moving each one slightly, but uh, you'll figure it out. If you're wondering where I got the 95 millimeters from, it is from the plans right here. You can see they have the string going from wingtip to wingtip and the 95 millimeters you're measuring right here and they just need to be the same on, on both wings. So, and again, that 95 millimeters is for the super duty. If you are building a cruiser or a stole or a 701, yours might be different, I don't know. So be sure to reference your plans. Now recall that I said these main struts have to be cut uh, once you measure them. And I have measured mine and cut off the ends. You know, there's probably 10 different ways you can do this, but the way I measured the strut was I put a bolt in the main hole and then I just looped a tape measure to the back of that bolt. And then I put the tape measure all the way out here to this part right here of the attach fitting and I measured that distance. Now once I had that distance, I put the bolt in the hole on the strut 
and I put the tape measure here and I brought the tape measure all the way out. I made my mark and then cut the struts. I did that on both sides. Now again, there's probably quite a few different ways you can cut those struts. Um, any saw, I guess, that would work that can cut through aluminum. For me, I took mine over to Len's house. Len is my neighbor that's building the Velocity. And uh, he's the one to cut the struts on my cruiser. And then we took these down there this morning and, and uh, we cut them on his saw. He has a, uh, I don't know what you call it, maybe a radio arm saw. It's kind of like this saw here, but it's mounted into a workbench where you can put the strut in there nice and square and then move the, the saw out and cut it. It works perfect on these struts. Um, so that's, that's what I use, but uh, I imagine you can use a grinding wheel or a, a bandsaw or something like that. They're not too hard to cut, but just make sure you get a nice square cut. Well, you've probably noticed that I have the left and right forward or main struts attached to the wing now. Those are done, I'm working on the aft struts now, but it's really hard to film while I'm doing this because I just wanna pay attention to what I'm doing and focus on what I'm doing. So I just have a bunch of sort of short random video clips and photos that'll kind of tell the story of, of how I got these on, but that's not edited together yet. So maybe tomorrow I'll try to do that and maybe tomorrow evening or the next day I'll put out a video kind of showing how I got the struts fit and the attachment fittings put in. So for now, I guess that's it for this video. Hopefully there was something useful for you in here. Even on this video, I know I didn't really show a lot of what I was doing. It's kind of more just showing you after it was done. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's more, t more important to pay attention to what I'm doing than to move a camera around. So anyway, we'll see you on the next video.